and the Jenison Outstanding Pathway to Governance Leadership Award 2021. Recognized as a great warrior of humanity by the International Human Rights Advisory Council, she received the Sakti Relay Award, appreciated by UNICEF and the Rajiv Gandhi University of Health Sciences, Bangalore, for COVID-19 research and development. She received citations and commendations from 18 universities and felicitated by 14 institutions. She got the NLM UNESCO Award 2000 for Karnataka with her work in literacy and the Karnataka Ratna Award for Kaveri Handicraft 2013. Dr. Kalpana is an advisor, Bangalore City Corporation, honorary consultant, administrative training institute, Masoo, member, public secretary, sectors advisory, Grant Thornton India, Member Advisory Board, World Congress on Women, and Advisor, Government Blockchain Association India. She did her doctorate and master's in public policy from Indian Institute of Management, Bangalore. Dr. Katna was rated among the top 2% of doctoral candidates in past decade for her research on infrastructure, public-private partnership. A gold medalist and university topper in her undergraduate and master's, having international exposure, including visiting fellow at McGill 2011, Concordia 2008 universities in Canada, EU fellow in the University of Salerno in Italy 2011, Shevning Gurukul Scholar Institute of Development Studies UK 1997, Maxwell Public uh, Policy Scholar in Syracuse University USA in 2002, she trained in evidence for policy design in the Center of International Development, Howard University, USA, 2014. In e-governance strategy in London School of Economics, UK, 2017, and Harris School of Public Policy, University of Chicago, USA, 2019. She was twice selected as a SAYSSP scholar by the University of Free State, Bloom Fountain, South Africa, and the International Institute of Applied System Analysis, 2013 and 2014. She presented paper in national and international fora and have published four books, several book chapters and journal articles and delivered almost 400 talks on different aspects of public policy to national and global audiences. Dr. Kalpana is member advisory board, board AIMS School of Business, Bangalore, member Academic Council, Mahatma Gandhi Kashi Vidyapit, Varanasi, advisor GSK Social Labs, Bangalore, member MDP Advisory Committee, Presidency University, Bangalore. She is also chief additional advisor, IJ360 MR, associate editor in chief, GRDJE, expert panel of reviewers, IIM Bangalore Review, IIM Bangalore, and GRJD, and member additional advisory board of IJBST, IJASRW, and IFERP journals. Let me quote her personal vision, which I'm really impressed that I have the head of an administrator, the head of an academic, and the hands of a volunteer. I desire not to be different, but to make a difference. Yes, ma'am, you are making difference all across the world. Now, without consuming any time, we request our honorable guest speaker, Dr. Kalpana, to address the gathering and cast the light of her knowledge upon us. Dear Dr. Kalpana Gopalan, ma'am, please, the stage is yours. Thank you so much, Dr. Ashish Kumar, uh, for that uh, very detailed introduction uh, and for sharing my vision. Good morning to all of you this Saturday morning. And it is my privilege and pleasure to be with all of you today and thank you for this opportunity. I express my appreciation to the organizers for their effort on such a vitally important issue. I thought it best that I speak on what I consider a critically important component in sustainability and environmental management, which is our personal responsibility as citizens. So I will speak on simple, actionable sustainability for the ordinary Indian, for you and me. My talk is loosely structured in three parts. I will begin, start the PPT, please. My talk is loosely structured in three parts. I will begin with a brief look on some sustainability initiatives globally, 
I will then touch upon my personal experience and then end with how we can and should make sustainability our personal responsibility. Next slide. Next slide, please. Who is sharing the slide? Can you move to the next slide? Discussions around green transformations, how to make economies and societies sustainable. You are in the right slide, just stay there. Discussions around green transformations, how to make economies and societies sustainable, are at the forefront of global, national, and local political agendas. I would like to begin with a peek at global sustainability strategies that are making the news today. In Sweden, and that is the slide you see before you, public-private collaboration has resulted in the IT system Kato that makes use of advanced algorithms to operate railway traffic as energy efficiently as possible. Next slide, please. Dr. Jasminder, next slide. Not that one. Go above. No, above that. Yeah. Here is a picture of vertical farming and urban orchards. Current estimates suggest that by 2050, the world will be inhabited by 9 billion people. 80% of whom will live in cities. To some extent, urban farming will have to happen. But if done smartly, it could revolutionize the way we view food production and create a local food movement for the urbanite. Mixed use skyscrapers are the perfect example of a smart city concept putting those tall glass buildings to good use as greenhouses. But at ground level too, mixed use parks and urban orchards could begin to provide food to the masses. Do you think it couldn't happen? It already did. During World War II, the Dig for Victory campaign saw formal gardens and parks turned into allotments producing millions of tons of food and effectively defeating German blockades. Next slide, please. Go down. Next slide. Next slide, please. Know about that? The previous slide. Yeah. There are also initiatives happening closer home. More than 1 million Bangladeshis could be displaced by rising sea levels by 2050. One consequence is that children cannot attend school for long periods of time, making it harder for them to escape poverty. By building a fleet of solar-powered school boats, the Bangladeshi initiative, Shidulai Swarnivar Sangstha, has secured year-round education in flood-prone regions of Bangladesh. Each floating school boat connects students from different riverside villages, ultimately docking at the last destination where on-board classes begin. And that is what you see before you. Solar lighting makes the schedule flexible which provides for additional educational programs in the evening. Shidulai's floating schools model has been replicated in Nigeria, Cambodia, Philippines, Vietnam, and Zambia. Next slide, please. So, next slide. Next slide, please. No, before that, previous one. Yeah. 
So what does these pictures tell us? All over the world, change is happening from fossil fuel to renewable energy and from throwaway to circular economy. It is no surprise then that sustainability is the stuff of conferences. We can declaim about sustainability from a podium, then go back home satisfied of a job well done. But if you are having tea during the break and I come to you and say, let us talk about sustainability, what will you do? You will discreetly move away or at least you will mentally switch off with a muttered, hey, kya fas yaar? this is exactly the problem. What does sustainability mean to you? To me, this is a question that no one ever bothers to answer. We live most of our life blissfully unaware and sheltered from the environmental crisis that our planet is facing. Even if we do learn something about it, the problem seems so complex and overwhelming that we give up before we start. Unless and until in one life-changing moment, the enormous importance of it all hits us suddenly. For me, this life-changing moment came when I sat, just like you are sitting now, as part of a small select audience and listened to Jeffrey Sachs, the economist turned idealist and director of the Earth Institute at Columbia University. Jeffrey spoke beautifully, convincingly. He demonstrated without doubt, how great is the crisis that is facing the earth. But I was not completely convinced. And so I dared to ask the great Jeffrey Sachs, why should this be important for me? I am struggling with my daily life, my daily problems. Why should I care? And anyway, what can I, a small, lone individual, what can I do? Why should I be my brother's keeper? The measure of a great man's greatness is how he addresses the little man or the little woman in this case. Jeffrey Sachs's greatness came through in that instant. He embraced, yes, that is the word, he embraced my question, acknowledged the essential moral nature of sustainability, the responsibility it places on each of us, and then laughed that while he could give macro level speeches, he was rather less enthusiastic about recycling in his own home. Next slide, please. So that is the key note I am going to address today. What is my role, your role, the role of each of us in sustainability? What are the things that we can do and should do? We Indians bemoan our collective lack of civic sense while simultaneously pardoning our own. This leads to a pervasive hypocrisy in our public discourse, not only on this issue, but on all larger issues. I hope that at the next, that, that at the end of the next 10 or 15 minutes, sustainability becomes for all of us a subject of our actionable present not just a doomsday prospect of a common gloomy future. Next slide. Next slide, please. Yes. First, stop, breathe, relax. The pralayam, 
the disaster may be imminent but this is a matter for rational action not fear real change and beneficial change take some time second educate yourself read everything you can watch documentaries enroll in more courses at college or online like coursera a lot of stuff goes on in the name of climate science you will never go wrong if you diligently question the world around you and educate yourself information today is available in plenty the trick is to access and internalize that which is simple real and actionable third do there are so many simple things that one can do without being overawed by labels recycling for instance it is ironic laughable really that we frugal indians have to learn about recycling from the opulently wasteful americans why my grandmother who used to make rasais from her old used sarees could teach us a thing or two about recycling so many of us cousins grew up wrapped in the warmth of her love as also in a red bandhani covered padded rasais i am sure we can't all go back to quilting but we also cannot rely on western solutions because it is either unsuitable to our lifestyle or redundant simply because we are already a careful people what is the point if we are cautioned against buying a third car when we don't even own one so it is left to us indians to evolve our own methods customized to our own context and there are so many things that we can do in a buffet or a wedding meal just help yourself to what you will need instead of heaping your plate and wasting the rest switch off appliances lights when on in, when not in use take along a reusable bag for your grocery shopping instead of asking for one more plastic or even paper bag use buckets and mugs instead of allowing the rivers of india to flow into your drains grow a small garden reduce your garbage segregate it and above all don't pile it in your neighbor's empty backyard i am sure each of you will be able to come up with many things that we can do when i speak of action there are certain caveats that i would like to make be realistic start with yourself assess where you are and how you can change many sustainability converts become over enthusiastic trying to change the those around them and become frustrated and stop when the others don't come along in fact a good way to go is to first formulate exactly what you want others to do how you want others to behave and then behave that way yourself the first steps are local look at your usage and make smart changes if you lived in rome or montreal i would suggest that you walk to work but here it is not really feasible most of the time so start with doable changes then work your way to the bigger ones or you can segment your efforts into personal actions local actions and national actions and steadily augment your effort as you know more you will do more and then you can expand and intensify your efforts you can invest in a cleaner car or a greener residence there is really no end to the things that you can do and will do 
when you get interested. Finally, there will certainly come a time when you will become a messenger. At that time, tell a compelling story, make it personal and relate it directly to the individual who is before you, so that your audience will care. I think part of our problem is that we still use the old approaches of the traditional environmental movement, using negative reinforcement, lobbying vague threats, focusing on all that stands to be lost. If it is going to survive, the sustainability movement needs to do just the opposite. Paint a picture of how good things could be. Talk about all the great things we will achieve, not all the bad things that we will avoid. And inspire people to change instead of trying to scare them. Last slide, please. Next slide. Next slide, please. Yes, thank you. This is my final takeaway to you. I have only to say, sustainability is not someone else's problem. It is mine, it is yours, and all of ours. But you don't need me to say this. Gandhiji said it a long, said it a long time ago, and you know it already. The earth provides enough to satisfy every man's need, but not every man's greed. The Mahatma, as usual, has summed it better than any of us could ever do. With these closing words, I wish your sustainability efforts all success. Thank you all very much. Jai Hind. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much. Uh, anybody has any question, anything you want to ask, you discuss, or uh, if anyone want to take any kind of guidance as well, who are also, I, I will say that the UPSC aspirants. Yes, yes, Saurabh, you can uh, unmute yourself. You can talk. Ma'am, don't you think the biggest thing, uh, if we want anything sustainable, the biggest problem is our population. No one is talking about that. If we decrease our population, then everything becomes quite more sustainable than it is right now. Any resources or anything? Populations throughout the world are already decreasing. It is only a few countries, ours included, where the demographics is such that we have a, a younger population, a joining population. Very soon, ours also will start tapering down and then we will have the opposite problem of an aging population. Uh, India, this would have been the, before your time, but uh, probably your professors, Dr. Ashish or even Dr. Jasbinder might remember our own efforts at population control during the emergency. They were disastrous. There were uh, anything where you are intruding into personal choice and the lives of people, it has to be voluntary. It cannot be dictatorial. So while this is a problem, we do have climate change we do have sustainability issues even in countries, European countries, where population is not an issue anymore. Uh, so while keeping that, uh, you know, as a realist perspective, we can still, we still can and ought to do what best we can. And that is use greener resources, uh, be energy efficient, control our consumption. So these efforts should go on. Any other student, anything you want to discuss with ma'am? 
any other uh ma'am there are many student actually uh, from our department who are preparing for uh, upsc as well sometime okay. they are just trying two or three times as well or at the last time uh, uh, whether they are the means or the uh, interviews they have to struggle so what they have to start initially from as there are also some lower class student as well which they are definitely their aim is just for uh, uh they are just setting their goals as well at this stage okay uh, uh, let me summarize maybe we can have a complete session sometime uh, on preparation for the upsc exam which is you know a presentation a longer presentation in itself uh broadly let me say that for uh, uh, the preliminary and the main examination which is your first uh, which are the two first hurdles Right. Um, uh, oh, before that, let me say this is the CSC is a very long drawn out process. It is not an examination; it's a whole process. So the first thing you should have is the stamina. That you know you should be in there for the long haul. Is you are making your career. Once you get into any of the civil services, your career is made. More uh, barring you know. Uh, Uh, barring the uh, untoward events you are uh, your promotions are assured you get a reasonably decent and prestigious living therefore you should first make up your mind that it is not for you know a one day examination i'll just finish and get out right. it is for the process and once you start preparing and you get in then you should from the day you start preparation think start thinking like an officer so this is one that you know that is the the first thing you start with that you should resolve to yourself that you are in for the long haul now coming to the actual process the preliminary examination is uh, the multiple choice right you should have a broad ranging knowledge about almost everything okay uh, not in depth knowledge uh, preparations for the civils whether it is for preliminary or even for the main examination is not the equivalent of preparing for a phd So I have done both, so I know. You don't require in-depth knowledge. What you need is analytical understanding and analytical expression. So, which is very different from the kind of uh, work which all of you would have done as part of your PhD research. Okay. So, in-depth is not required. Of an analytical understanding and a broad spread, breadth of knowledge is more critical. Uh, Uh, the uh, preliminary just tests you know your basic knowledge therefore you don't need to think about things you just need to know so it's about knowledge when you come to the main examination regardless of whichever uh, subject you are choosing i had at that time chosen chosen english which was my subject in ma and history which which i had not studied before but now the range of subjects are very many and you can choose whatever is convenient to you you should take one which is part of your degree which you have already studied so that limits your ne the necessity for uh, you know preparing the other optionals can be something uh, you know which is which you can do on your own without attending a class which you can study and understand on your own now here you need analysis you should any problem you should be able to think analyze the problem diagnose the problem and provide solutions to the problem whether it is you know the uh, historical event or whether it is a it's a social science problem the template is the same so that you need to be well prepared so you need to be you need to think about things and since it is so you will not have time to revise therefore as and when you are covering a certain topic write notes following the same template before the exam you know do a quick uh, reading and you will be ready to go uh, the interview which is you know most people fear the interview the interview is meant to see your aptitude so they are not really seeing you know whether you speak english well or whether you know you are uh, very competent uh, engineer or a very knowledgeable historian they are seeing whether you are suitable for a life in administration and therefore most of the questions will not be testing your knowledge per se 
they will be testing your approach to problems and your problem solving or solution finding abilities uh, the thing to do is to you know go to the interview well rested and in a calm frame of mind uh, what they might do and which, which is what they did to me that somebody will ask you a question as you are answering someone else will interrupt how do you react do you get impatient do you get nervous or are, are you able to calmly finish the first answer and then go, then go to the next they will cross question you do you get panicky or are you able to approach and answer uh, or address that particular cross question so these are the kind of things broadly which you know you have to do uh, have to prepare so uh, we we can do a longer session but uh, broadly this uh, these are the this is the way to go and uh, reading uh, there's virtually nothing which is you know of everything you should read which you can't because time is limited uh, i i uh, for general studies i looked at hindu uh, i never went to times of india anyway times of india not very big in my time uh, front line uh, economic times and financial express and uh, india today was in my time much better than it was now it is now uh, so india today was another magazine which i read generally itself i was broadly abreast of uh, current affairs so that was not an issue for you it is much much easier because you have the internet so almost everything is available it was not there in my time so documentaries are a good way to go if you want to relax mentally see a documentary on an important topic so thanks like right. thank you ma'am thank yeah. you very much for your guidance uh, any other student want to uh, share anything anyone i think there is no query now uh, so i will now uh, please hand over to uh, dr harpreet ma'am please uh, continue the session thank you thank you so much jaswinder i uh, i on behalf of department of uh, chemistry school of physics chemical engineering and physical sciences extend a very hearty vote of thanks to dr kalpana palan for gracing your important work and sharing with us your finding and opinions today we had an opportunity to to hear your life changing moments and this will surely be going to encourage us to make some changes in our personal life as, as well so that uh, we all can ha hold hands in developing a greener cleaner and sustainable india thank you so much ma'am for gracing this session thank you so much thank you have a nice day all of you Thank you all. Thank you very much for attending the session. Uh, they all can join the classes from twelve to one now. All right, sir. Thank you.